There are quite a few terrible legendaries inside Dragonair Silent Gods, and it feels like every season with the damage types we get, we always get a damage type that is bad. You go and you summon a whole bunch of legendaries for that banner, the special season banner. You get those legendaries like Thunderbolt, and then you feel terrible about spending your money because this game never does any kind of balancing. And then you have a hero come out like Rook that is just more powerful than anything else. And you have these legendaries here in the aura class, if you're playing season three, that are absolutely terrible. And what I'm gonna show you today is this legendary called Linkos. This guy right here, he's the Kelpie looking mermaid. And we're gonna do some damage comparison numbers with him against some epics. We didn't throw in the rare. The rare is actually pretty good, the aura rare. But we're gonna see some crazy numbers. And then we've got Diantha, who is a little bit better. She can increase your overall damage on a team like this by like two and a half million. And we're not looking for anything overpowered. We're not trying to get a legendary that just breaks the game. What we want are legendaries that act like legendaries, that are not being beat out by rares and epics and that just basically make no sense to have inside the game. You can see the gear we've got right here. We have, this is actually the Emperor set, although it's got the wrong icon. Emperor set, Emperor set, Emperor set, because you get the most damage with Emperor set. All these have attack percentage chest, attack percentage gloves on every single one of them, so their attack is very, very high. We've got attack down here, attack on both of the runes. And then of course, substats with crit rate, critical damage, which is remains here. We've got the eyeball on her. We've got the roots on this one right here, Theohin. We've got this one for the gatekeeper staff to give us some massive shield so we can fight this boss for the full five minutes. And then here we get resistance along with some additional healing just because we need high resistance on this boss that we're gonna face here. And then you can see these other teams. This team, we just switched the gear from her that we have on her right now and we just put that gear on this legendary. That's it, that's all we did is put that same exact gear to see if we can get an overall damage increase to see what kind of damage he's doing, to see what kind of, uh, compared to the damage that Kareth is doing. Starting out, you can see we're at 34.5 million. That's with our three DPS in the aerial set. Right after we switch them from the aerial set to the Emperor set, we go up to 49 million. The Emperor set is without a doubt the best. Go ahead and put that attack percentage on everything and get the Emperor set. We make sure we have the timings correct. The same timing we had on the other team. Now we've got Linkos in here, the legendary aura hero that has a lot of cool abilities and a lot of massive AOE damage. So I know what you're thinking. If he doesn't do well on single target damage here, maybe he's just like an AOE board wide nuker because his ultimate can do AOE damage. This little summons that he does can do damage to someone along with the enemies around them. And then his battle skill is a big cross section attack. So he has a lot of abilities to do a massive amount of AOE. And don't worry, we're gonna test that too against a lot of heroes so you can see the difference of his AOE damage on five test dummies to a lot of other people's AOE damage and you're gonna be very surprised. So remember, we got 49 million with this exact team with the Epic in place, Kareth Epic in place of Linkos, this Kelpie mermaid that's here right now. So we're just gonna jump forward. Same thing, we're going five minutes. We're going to time on this boss. The very end here, here we go, there we go. All right, 30 seconds left. And you can see the total damage is still at 43 million. 43.6 to 49 million, 49 something million. So we're losing out five million damage. Side by side comparison, 43.6 million, 49 million, same exact gear. We're just replacing that epic with a legendary hero that does supposedly supposed to bring in some damage. The other thing about Linkos is he has a 23 second cooldown on his ultimate ability and that is with scrolls. Why he has a 23 second, I have no idea. Doesn't make sense because the guy does not bring any kind of damage. So we'll go back to that original statement where we said, well, maybe he's an AOE hero. Maybe this guy is meant to do a lot of AOE damage. Well, let's test that out. Theo Hearn against five test dummies. We're gonna do her for three minutes and see what kind of damage she can do. Then we're gonna take that same exact gear that's on her and we're gonna put it over onto Linkos against five targets. Theo Hearn only attacks two with her battle skill and then hits everybody with her ultimate. That's it. Two right there on the battle skill, everybody else with her ultimate, and we'll see what kind of damage she's got at the end. And then over here, Linkos, check out what this guy does. Check out what kind of 
Same gear, 100% chance to crit. We did change their gear a little bit so that they would all have 100%. If we have 100% chance to crit for three minutes, we're gonna get the same exact damage every single time because there's no variation here. There's no wild procs. There's nothing crazy we need to worry about. This guy's ultimate is hitting everyone. His battle skill is hitting everyone. And he summons this little thing that comes out that will attack two units. Look at that. Two abilities that hit a whole board, or at least everybody that we have here, five people that we have because his battle skill is a big cross section, his ultimate is everybody on the board, and then his summon will hit one target and then everybody around that target. So he's hitting so many, many, many more targets. So you would think obviously his damage is gonna be much higher than Theo Hin that we used a minute ago. And we're gonna bring in another hero that's not even associated with Aura, just to give us an idea of what kind of damage this guy really is doing. So let's go forward with him. We see his damage at 5.9 million. Now we're gonna bring in Rava. And we also brought in Horus because Horus has a lead of just HP. Rava does have a critical damage lead and I didn't want that to mess up our scoring. So she's decent for AoE. She's not like an AoE queen by any means, but she is an AoE damage dealer and she does decent AoE damage. Not, not incredible. There are other people out there that do far more AoE damage than she does. But I just wanted to kind of get a comparison. Same exact gear that he, Theo Hearn and Linkos had on. And let's look at her total damage. 5.18 million over here with Rava. 7.1 million with Theo Hearn. And then 5.9 million with a legendary that is doing, like hitting so many targets. So many insane targets. Now tell me why anybody would level that legendary up, scroll that legendary, and be happy about that. Feel satisfied that they spent their money inside this game. It, it just kind of, it's terrible for the game not to balance. We need balancing in this. And we need to tell them which heroes need balancing. Even Diantha, this one right here. She does enable aura heroes to do 20% more damage. She doesn't need accuracy to apply this debuff, which is great. And it looks like she would do a lot of damage herself. She doesn't. She only increases our overall damage on this team by 2.5 million compared to this team here with this person. Now, I do use Diantha because I have the exclusive. I have Amon, and Amon does do like 70% of my overall damage on the Vortex boss. So, of course, bringing in somebody that can increase that damage by 20% makes sense. She's another aura hero, but she's only helping out the exclusive because that exclusive is doing so much damage. In any other team like this, it's it's not really increasing it much. So we've got two aura legendaries. We have three, I believe, aura epics, and then we've got one rare. And these legendaries are really kind of trash, to be honest with you. And they need to be balanced, especially Linkos. She needs to have her damage increase as well. But you can't even say that this guy's good at AOE. You can't say that this guy's good at single target damage. You can't say that he's good at anything. And this 23 second cooldown with scrolls into him just further makes no sense for this guy. It kind of has to do with really how aura functions, how you have to get into this blaze state to be able to use aura. And then when you're in blaze state, you can no longer get aura gains until you're out of blaze state. Then you can start gaining aura again, and then you get back into blaze state. It just does not work well, and these don't work well. So anybody getting these heroes in season three, don't really use them. If you have her, you can use her with this team right here, that's fine. Again, you'll get a 2.5 million increase. But if you don't have Diantha, then go ahead and bring in this lady right here. And the way I have this set up is this girl actually only does one hit on her ultimate. She has Witch's Remains. But then anytime another or a hero hits, she'll fire off two other shots from her ultimate. So immediately she'll fire, and if she doesn't apply Witch's Remains, I have this girl fire next. She'll fire two shots when this one hits, and then that'll be three total hits before my main DPS hits. So hopefully with those three hits, she'll apply Witch's Remains. So another big problem with aura heroes are there's nobody with a multi-hit ultimate. Not like a true multi-hit ultimate. Not three hits that are going to go off or five hits that are going to go off. I have to do her one attack here. And then once another person attacks, she'll then fire off one or two arrows. 
which is part of her ultimate. So she's got a chance to apply decreased defense then. And then if it's not applied in these three hits, then when she attacks, she'll fire off two more arrows, arrows, and hopefully it'll be applied by then. And we're not trying to make anybody busted inside the game, but we do want legendaries to function like legendaries and not be beat out by epics and rares. It's completely ridiculous and it will lead people to spending money inside this game heroes never get balanced and then they'll just leave they won't feel satisfied with spending they won't feel satisfied with playing and they'll just go play some other game let me know what you think about these or heroes let me know what you think about thunderbolt heroes from season two because they are really trash as well unless you have the exclusive without the exclusive they just are terrible they don't apply the debuff they don't do a lot of damage thunderbolt is just another whole line of heroes damage type that needs to be revised now there are far more other ones like poison ticks there's summons that need to be revised there's a lot to talk about with this game but the further we keep going without any kind of balancing going on like improvement to heroes that are not performing well the worse it's gonna get so let me know your thoughts about that down below thanks so much for watching i will see you all in a video soon